All right. So the next speaker. Uh, the next paper is about evaluating and monitoring free-running oscillators. And uh, this is joint work with uh, Eli Alini, Maciet, Skorci, Skorsky, Otto Petura, Florent Bernard, Mark Lavan, and Victor Fischer. And Otto will give the talk. Thank you. So let me jump right in and start with some uh, core concepts and motivation. Uh, well, the jitter clock, the jittery clock, as a uh, commonly used source of randomness uh, in digital devices, can be caused by uh, uh, several noise sources, among which uh, white noise is by far the best because it is not manipulable. Then there are autocorrelated noises, which uh, uh, introduce dependencies to output numbers, and uh, so they uh, make entropy rate uh, difficult to estimate. And uh, lastly, there are uh, data-dependent noises, which are dangerous because, uh, obviously, they depend on the data processed. So uh, they shall never be used uh, to generate random numbers from. And uh, it seems easy and clear on the paper, but uh, uh, all these noises are actually affecting the jittery clock at the same time. So uh, in order to produce quality random numbers, we need to monitor jitter continuously to verify its uh, properties. And uh, uh, usually we use uh, variance uh, for that. Uh, there is a common assumption that uh, the quality of the jitter depends and the properties of the jitter can depend on uh, the type of the oscillator used. And uh, we actually uh, decided to test this assumption by comparing two commonly used oscillators, uh, and those are the ring oscillators and self-timed rings. Also, the quality of the generated random numbers uh, depends on the uh, randomness extraction method used. And uh, there are quite a few, among which the most, uh, uh, the most commonly used is uh, the uh, jittery clock sampling, which uses one oscillator to generate uh, the reference clock, which is used to sample the jittery clock uh, generated by the, by the second oscillator. Uh, another method, which is less common but uh, much more efficient, is to count the jittery clock periods. And uh, here, the reference uh, oscillator is used to generate the counting period during which we count uh, the uh, rising edges of the jittery clock. Our objectives here, just to summarize them, are uh, to analyze the use of uh, variance uh, for entropy estimation. Uh, use high-order Markov model to estimate entropy coming from autocorrelated noises, and compare performance of ring oscillators and STRs as source of randomness. So the entropy at the output of the generator uh, depends on uh, the variance of jitter, and uh, uh, this variance can be uh, computed from power spectral density uh, of uh, the random fluctuations affecting the clock frequency. So uh, uh, how does it uh, actually work? The uh, variance can be computed from the uh, power spectral density uh, by integrating, actually, the power spectral density uh, multiplied by the uh, Fourier image of uh, the variance uh, operator, which, uh, for statistical variance, which is more the most commonly used, looks like this. Uh, and uh, um, the statistical variance has one big disadvantage, and that is that for uh, uh, low-frequency noises such as flicker noise, this integral does not converge. And so, consequently, the statistical variance causes entropy overestimation. Luckily for us, there are other types of uh, variance, such as Allen variance, uh, which uh, uh, is actually computed from the first-order differences of values. And this variance is ensured to converge even for low-frequency noises. And so it is accurate uh, even when uh, these low-frequency noises are affecting the signal. Now, since the variance and all other statistical measures are uh, uh, accurate only when computed from infinite uh, uh, data set, which we cannot do uh, in reality, we need to compute them uh, for it from, the, from limited set of data where we use only m samples. And uh, uh, the statistical vari uh, variance uh, tends to, uh, uh, to diverge when uh, changing this, uh, this value, 
which is not the case for uh, Alan variants. So as seen here in experimental results, actually uh, Alan variance stays uh, stable uh, regardless of the number of samples used to compute it. Uh, and also here on the right side, uh, we can see that uh, uh, based on the jitter accumulation period K, which, is, uh, which corresponds to number of uh, uh, reference clock periods used to generate one sample, uh, Allen variance uh, stays always below the statistical one. So the statistical vari variance we can see here uh, really uh, overestimates the, uh, the jitter. Here, it is important to note that uh, uh, our intention is to use the, uh, the lowest uh, accumulation time uh, period possible to reduce the impact of uh, low frequency noises, such as flicker noise. But uh, below certain value, uh, quantization noise prevails, and so uh, we need to choose a suitable compromise. Also, for both oscillator types that we uh, tested, these results were very similar. So in order to uh, monitor digital uh, uh, in real time, we need to implement the uh, variance measurement in hardware, where again we can see that Allen variance is, uh, much, more, uh, is much more suitable because uh, it is simpler to implement. Uh, for example, it does not require us to uh, uh, compute the mean value of samples on the fly, so it reduces the requirement of this compute, uh, computational branch. And also, since it's, uh, it operates on first-order differences, it reduces the requirements on general register size. So uh, when compared to, uh, to other implementations, implementation of Allen vari variance uh, is uh, all smaller, faster, and require more power effective. So now, at the beginning, I said that uh, autocorrelated noises are not, uh, not that good to generate randomness from uh, random numbers from because they uh, introduce dependencies to output uh, numbers but these dependencies can be uh, conveniently uh, modeled using uh, markov chains and recent approach uh, actually offers uh, an efficient way to estimate mean entropy using markov uh, uh, markov models so obvious uh, application would be to try to uh, estimate entropy coming from uh, low frequency noises autocorrelated noises, actually. So we did that. And uh, we see here that uh, Markov chains are actually very efficient and very accurate uh, in detecting, uh, in estimating the, the entropy, especially in high entropy cases here, where uh, neither the AIS uh, nor the NIST standardized test uh, could tell the difference in the entropy rate, which we can see uh, when estimating using Markov chains. Also, here on this slide, uh, we can see that uh, counting the jittery clock periods is much more effective method of randomness extraction than uh, sampling the jittery clock, because already after 20,000 periods of reference clock, we were able to accumulate enough jitter to pass all the tests, where even an, uh, after waiting for 100,000 periods of reference clock, we were not able to, to accumulate enough jitter when just sampling the clock. Now also, another, uh, another aspect to consider when designing a TRNG is that uh, uh, the surrounding logic uh, actually has an, an impact on uh, the randomness source itself. So to be able to quantify this, we decided to implement three projects all in the same device, where the first project was the reference project where, where only the oscillators were implemented inside the device and their jitter and uh, corresponding counter values were measured using oscilloscope. The second project uh, contained AES cipher uh, oscillator-based TRNG and embedded var variance measurement uh, to mimic the behavior of the whole crypto system implemented. And one of the clocks was generated using external quartz oscillator, where the other one was uh, generated inside the device. And in the third project, we implemented the whole crypto system again, but both clocks were uh, generated inside the device. Here we can see that uh, implementing the whole crypto system more than doubles the jitter of internal oscillator or internal oscillators. And, uh, uh, but basically, uh, the variance of counter values does not change 
uh, when only internal oscillators are used, which is not the case when external oscillator is used, where the variance of counter values drastically changes. And uh, so also the entropy estimation based on this variance measurement uh, will be over overestimated and incorrect. On top of all that, uh, we can introduce global noise sources, and we will introduce global noise sources into the generator when using external clocks. And finally, the comparison of uh, the ring oscillators and the STRs. And here we conducted the autocorrelation study where uh, we can see that autocorrelation of counter values when using external quartz oscillator uh, combined with either of the, the two internal oscillators is extremely high. This autocorrelation is reduced when using only two internal oscillators. And when working on uh, the first order differences, which is the case when we use Allen var uh, variance, the autocorrelation is uh, negligible. And finally, to conclude, counting jittery clock periods gives higher quality random numbers, which provides for higher bit rate and higher entropy rate. Counter values can be also directly used to, uh, uh, to monitor the jitter. Allen variance should be used to estimate entropy rather than the statistical variance, because it is not sensitive to window size, and it provides accurate estimation even uh, when uh, low frequency noises are present. And also, it requires smaller circuitry to implement. The differential principle of the TRNG design is a stringent requirement and not a recommendation because global manipulable noises are strong and they are in inevitable. They may even come from the temp ambient temp temperature in the room, which was also the case in, uh, uh, which was also our case. Uh, and finally, high order Markov chain models uh, provide good mean entropy estimates and are efficient to detect dependencies uh, in generated numbers, so that uh, they may be the, the good way to, uh, to go in the future to, uh, uh, to, study, the, uh, the run, uh, to study the randomness that's, uh, that's coming from autocorrelated noises. Well, that's all from my side, and uh, let me just thank our sponsors, and uh, thanks to all of you for listening to me. So, are there any questions? No questions? There is one. Uh, so, maybe uh, uh, there, 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 there is one over here. there. Oh, there is one question? Okay, sorry. Yes. Uh -huh. At the NC. So, the ma main source of jitter is. Sir? And. <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't hear you because uh, the microphone is perhaps not working. <laughs> oh, all right. So the main. Yeah. Put put the the microphone closer to you. Is this good? Yeah. Yes. That's all right. <laughs> okay, I'll cover my face with it. So <clears throat> the main source of jitter in the clock distribution network is uh, noise in the power supply network. So did you try to characterize the noise in the power supply network, like in the, the voltage regulator module and so on? Well, act actually, we tried that because uh, when we detected this problem with, uh, um, uh, sorry, uh, with uh, uh, yeah, noises affecting the, the generator when using external clock, we uh, tried to find out where this noise is coming from. And we tried also to uh, characterize the noise coming from the power supply. But since the board that we were using was using uh, linear power supplies, low noise power supplies, that wasn't coming from that. But uh, yes, that's, uh, that's one of the things that, uh, that actually might, uh, might, affect, uh, might affect this. Uh, for example, the, uh, the power supply on the board is actually affecting the board itself and not only the, the device. I don't know if that answers the question. But that was not coming from that. In, in our case, the, the noise that was uh, affecting uh, the external clock and uh, the, uh, the, whole still, uh, the whole generator was coming actually from the ambient temperature. 
we managed to correlate the behavior of uh, ambient temperature in the room to the behavior of the, of the noise. OK. To see why it's not working. OK. <laughs> Um, I was just going to ask, um, the 90B tests do include a predictor based on high order Markov models. So I was curious um, if you thought about that at all. Um, I noticed that the 90B tests were giving a lower estimate than, than, your, than your thing in your data. Uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's. I don't know if that was right, if that's more accurate or less accurate, but I, but I just want to point out that there is a higher order Markov model up to 16th order, I think, in one of the predictors in 90B. I must admit that this is not my area of expertise, but uh, I remember something like that from the discussions with other authors, and uh, I think that uh, the answer may lie in the order of, uh, of the Markov chain, which here in our case was, uh, was chosen uh, based on the autocorrelation study that uh, is presented uh, in one of the last slides uh, here. Actually, so perhaps I don't know. Maybe it's because of the the Markov model that we used was more tailored to what we had. Right. The, so the predictor, the um, I just know this because it's my design. But the the Markov model predictor considers Markov models with depth one through sixteen, and whichever one is giving the best predictions is the one that it uses for okay. its uh, for its estimate. So it, it has some flexibility. It would it wouldn't go higher than sixteen, but okay. So I don't well, know if that's useful. Uh, I don't know. I would consider that, but we used eight order, and really, I'm not really the right person to. Mm, okay. <laughs> I'm not qualified enough to to answer that, but uh, that's that's what I was told to to say. Okay. Cool. <laughs> Sorry. There's one more question here, in the front. So uh, my question goes in the same direction. Uh, John, uh, 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 question. Uh, so I think uh, if you have dependencies uh, in such models, then you have long-term dependencies. So this, uh, and uh, therefore you would or it would be good uh, uh, to have a, a very high order of the Markov model. Otherwise, you cannot estimate uh, all the state transitions. So you have a problem. You. Uh, you already said that's not your field of expertise. So. Yes, but I, I think that the, the answer would be still still the same. That uh, actually uh, uh, a colleague that designed this uh, designed it uh, based on the study of the autocorrelation that we made. So he had some basis of uh, what we are working mm -hmm. with. And uh, could you say? Oops. Sorry. <laughs> uh, the order of the autocorrelation function uh, after uh, smoothing, so it's uh, 10 to the minus 3 or 4, 5, uh, it cannot be seen on these, so uh, the right hand uh, Here? Pictures. Here? Uh, yeah, the upper, upper one. So this one, the upper one no, here? No, no, the, 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 lower, the lower one, right? Uh, this one, uh, I don't know, but uh, if I'm not mistaken, that's uh, actually written in the article, so I very warmly invite you to read it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Any more questions? Okay, let's thank the speaker again.